Hi everybody, uh, this is uh, Laszlo Vasco with Micro Adventures and uh, today I was uh, planning to do sort of a special episode uh, to talk about flying for those that are afraid of flying. So if you're a nervous flyer, uh, if you're uncomfortable on commercial airlines, um, if you would never want to get into a small plane because you're afraid of flying, uh, then I actually want to uh, talk about the idea of indeed uh, going out to a uh, flight school at a uh, local airport and um, getting an introductory flight or maybe even take a couple lessons to get a better understanding of how airplanes work. Um, I myself was a nervous flyer uh, on, on commercial airlines and I never wanted to get into a small plane. The only reason I got into a small plane was that a friend of mine had a pilot's license, offered to take me up on a flight. I first declined, but when he asked if I was afraid of flying, I said, no, I'm not afraid. Let's go up and fly. I went up with him and I was really nervous, but um, I was also um, struck by the, I guess, uh, the freedom that you experience, the, you know, the, the whole concept was new to me. And uh, I remember that I kept thinking, when are we landing, when are we landing? But in the meantime, I was asking questions and he was explaining how airplanes worked, etc. And the first thought that occurred to me after we landed was that, wow, this was a thrill. And then I told him, you know what, let's do this one more time next week. He, he came around the following week, took me up again, and when we landed after that, that time I was less nervous or more focused on asking questions and things like that. And after we landed for the second time, I said, I'm getting my pilot's license. But um, that's not the uh, point today. The, the point is, is that you can actually learn quite a bit about, um, not just avi you know, about aviation, about small planes, uh, and to get a familiarity level with them to address the nervousness because that for sure for me went away. This is a Cessna 150, uh, one of the most successful if not the most successful training aircraft uh, ever built uh, by Cessna in the 1950s. So they've been uh, making these for, for quite some time. This particular one is from the mid 70s um, and it is the type of airplane I got my uh, license in and, and uh, thousands of people got their uh, licenses in these. It's two seater. Uh, designed really for, for training. Um, what makes an airplane stay in the air? Well, it's actually not the motor. That's what makes it go forward, uh, but it's the wing. You can see that the bottom of the wing is flat. The top of the wing is curved. Um, and then with the Bernoulli principle, you can kind of think about it this way. As, as the airplane traverses goes forward, you have two air particles here. One goes on the bottom, one goes on the top. For them to meet up over here, because otherwise you'd be splitting the atmosphere, which can't happen. So those two particles, in a sense, need to meet up, which causes the one on top to traverse a longer distance because it goes over the curve. And uh, the faster speed uh, causes a lower pressure and hence pulls the plane up. The same principle is applied on the propeller. Uh, so the propeller actually, if you look at the end, it is the same thing. It's flat in the back, curved on the front, spins forward. The air over here is going to accelerate. It's going to create lower pressure and it's going to pull the plane forward. And, but it's actually the wings and not the engine nor the propeller. And hence why gliders without engines are able to fly. Horizontal stabilizer. Uh, this front section is the horizontal stabilizer which is an upside down wing. So this one is flat on the top, curved on the bottom, which means, yes, this one is pulling the plane down or basically it's pulling the tail down uh, to, to counterbalance that and, and, and basically uh, keep it flying level. And then we have the elevator, which then facilitates um, the airplane going, changing, it's uh, going up and down, basically. It's called this part rudder, but it's similar to uh, what you would see on a boat, basically. And uh, this helps 
with the yaw of the airplane going like this is via what are called ailerons and those are on the rear part of the wing uh, which when deflected so uh, when you turn you can I don't know if you can see it on the video but right now if you turn the yoke to the right this deflects up which causes this wing just imagine how the air hits it it would cause this wing to go down and the airplane to bank to the right and now you're initiating a turn um, you'll learn more about the exact dynamics and better understand how they fly but one thing to note is how simple the whole concept is. I did create a video, by the way, of our Cessna 170 getting an annual inspection, which, if, again, if you're nervous about it, you may want to take a look at that video. It explains a little bit what goes into the maintenance of these aircraft. They're not maintained simply like a car. They're maintained to a lot higher uh, specification from the FAA. There's a lot of regulations that go into the maintenance of, of aircraft to ensure their reliability. Engine running. Notice. We'll listen to the uh, local weather. Brandywine Airport. Automated weather observation. Two, three, zero, six, Zulu. Weather. Wind. Calm. Visibility. One, zero, seven thousand. Scattered. Temperature. Two, zero, Celsius. Dew point. One, three. Altimeter. Two, niner, niner, seven. Please be advised, possibly. One of the things we said is the altimeter, because as the pressure, altimeters are super simple. Uh, they uh, measure the difference in, in altitude as you go up uh, with pressure. So you need to set them for the uh, pressure of the day. Of course, pressure changes, uh, actually continues to change as the atmosphere moves about. So it's continually updated. And uh, this airport has a wet, mini weather station, basically. And that's what I was just uh, listening to. So now we taxi out. One of the initial things I was surprised about is that you steer airplanes on the ground with the rudder pedal. The rudder is interlinked, in this case, with the nose wheel. So it also turns the nose wheel. And that's what gets you around. It gets very intuitive afterwards, given that the rudder controls this yaw direction in the air. So it totally makes sense that the rudder also controls the same yaw direction on the ground. And the rudder pedals have a hinge on top so that the brakes are on the uh, top. So when you tap the top of them, it is, is, is how you stop. And there's two sets, uh, so you can't really mess up. The uh, instructor will be guiding you and then they can take controls uh, immediately. Uh, so it's not something to uh, worry about, uh, but it's kind of kind of fun. Uh, le learning it actually uh, initially. Now in the run up, we test the ignition system. One of the redundancies in an airplane is that there is two sets of ignition systems basically. Uh, two sets of spark plugs, two sets of magnetos which are similar to what's on a lawnmower so this airplane doesn't need electricity to fly. It generates its own spark with these magnetos. So even if I shut off the, the battery and power, and a lot of the older airplanes right after World War II, the Piper Cubs, etc., didn't have an electrical system. So, so that's not needed either. So if your alternator breaks on a car, you'll break down, not an airplane. You, you, you'll continue to fly. Uh, eventually you'll run out of battery and your radios will stop working, but the airplane is gonna continue to fly. And that's what we just tested by basically taking up the RPM and we shut one off. We shut one off and we can see that with one set of spark plugs instead of two, it's a little bit less efficient and hence there's a slight drop in RPM. We drop it to the other one, so engine keeps running, which means both of them are working. This is how we verify before each flight that our ignition system is in top notch. We also check the flight controls Make sure everything's moving in the proper proper direction. Everything is free and uh, correct. Anyway, traffic, Cessna 63465, departing runway 27, and we'll be departing to the north, anyway. I continue to steer with the rudder. 
as you're accelerating down. Once you reach rotation speed, gently pull back on the yoke, and that lifts the plane off the ground. And now one of your key instruments is the airspeed indicator, uh, which is essential for all phases of flight. Uh, so on takeoff, then you set your best climb speed to be able to uh, climb up. Traffic, uh, Cessna 63465, putting the pattern to the north. Now we switch over to Philly ATC. 45, American 23, 23 CM. American 2468, proceed direct to Modena. Direct Modena, American 2468. Old Alfie approach, uh, Cessna 63465, did you climbing out of uh, Brandywine northbound? 63465, uh, Philly approach, I dent. I dent, 63465. 465, radar contact, Philly altimeter 29 or 9 or 4. 29 or 9 or 4, 63465. Philly Street 5577, reduce speed to 190, contact Philly final 125.4. 190 on the speed 254 on the radio, Blue Street 5577, thanks. Okay, so as you heard, uh, also one of the things that surprised me is that, um, although it shouldn't be so surprising, there is only one air traffic control uh, system. Uh, so that's the same system the big airlines use as well. It's a beautiful, smooth day today. We'll also get us a chance to uh, see, uh, hopefully, a nice sunset. One of the other similarities to boats is that, you know, first of all, you're out in this big open sea, basically, or, or air. You don't have to worry about hitting anybody. So unlike learning to drive, you gotta be really careful because you can run off the road instantly. It's not really, it's, that's not the case here at all. And uh, so one of the neat things is that it is similar to, you know, steering a boat. You can go a little bit this way or that way, up and down. Doesn't really matter. And the controls are also similar. They're not sort of instantaneous like in a car. Uh, people get very nervous. They think that, oh, if I touch this and I turn, you know, start turning the plane, it will crash. And no, not at all. You, but, you know, you kind of have to do a big abrupt, long input to, to start um, upsetting an airplane. It's not something you can accidentally do. So that's another factor when you come out and, and take a lesson is that it's you know you can't really mess up uh, in a sense not with an instructor Every next to you we have the uh school yeah, river okay, back. and that's the passan limerick uh, power station right there so the first time i uh, went up with my friend it was actually a bumpy day and uh, I, I do recommend uh, that, uh, well, definitely interview instructors um, and then go up on a calm day. I think that will probably help, which is either overcast, but another great time to go is early in the morning. Uh, so, so book a uh, lesson or an introduction to flight the first thing sort of early in the morning uh, before the sun, uh, you know, uh, is starts to generate and starts to heat up the uh, the earth and starts to generate those thermals so it's going to be nice nice and smooth or uh, actually sunset time is another uh, great time to go uh, when things are settling back down and, uh, and you no longer have those uh, bumps uh, so that that will certainly help because otherwise as you can see it's actually you know uh, these things I don't need to touch the controls uh, and when I do, you know, it's all, it's just fingertip. Yeah, so as I was demonstrating in the pre-flight, pulling back on the uh, yoke, as us go up. And as we start to go up, if we don't change the power setting, the airplane's gonna start to slow down. But you can see it takes quite some time. And so, let's give it some power. And then that allows us to maintain a uh, constant uh, climb. Level out, push forward a little bit, and we are 
pass the power to a cruise Senec. And now we'll do some turns. So you just turn the uh, yoke. It makes the airplane in and it initiates a turn. Turn it to the left. We want to make sure we're clear of any traffic. And we initiate a turn to the right. So, um, that kind of banks it, the plane starts to go like that, but it's kind of skidding a little bit, so you kind of push on the rudder a little bit in the same direction. Turning to the right, we also push on the right pedal. That allows us to do a nice, perfectly balanced turn. If I had a cup of water here, you would see that the water level is exactly level if you have the right inputs into the controls. And there is a simple instrument here with a the uh, tube with a bowl in it that shows how balanced you are, basically. Uh, so that the uh, gravitational force, basically, should continue to be exactly down on the airplane. That's when it has the perfect turn. Because in reality, what makes an airplane turn, even though initially I said it's the ailerons, but that's not true. That's what puts it in a bank. What makes a turn is the elevator. Because once we're in a turn, uh, we're kind of losing lift uh, because the wing isn't as efficient now. It's now it's uh, it, it isn't having you know not slanted. And you're not having the same uh, surface. So what you need to do is pull also a little bit on the elevator on the yoke to be able to keep it at the same altitude. So it's actually the elevator uh, that makes an airplane turn. Uh, the aileron puts it in a bank, or a rudder keeps it in a uh, uh, coordinated turn, uh, but it's actually then pulling on the uh, uh, pulling on the yoke and uh, with the elevator that we're making it kind of go around. If we steepen the turn to a 45 degree turn, uh, which is now a steep turn, this will basically pull. You gotta maintain altitude, you actually are uh, pulling uh, one G's, meaning you're kind of doubling the amount of weight that you're feeling. So you actually feel it a little bit in your seat uh, as you kind of zoom around. For those that then get the book and start to get their uh, pilot training, it's a wonderful journey. hours. Some of that initially obviously is with an instructor sitting right next to you uh, until uh, you learn sort of the basics of flying and land landing. When you, once you're proficient in landing, instructor may sign you off to fly solo. <laughs> you go into the next phase of training, which is cross country, and uh, learning how to navigate, uh, how to again. You start adding in night flying to be able to fly at night, get used to landing in the dark. You start adding in um, flights to control to tower airports and learn how to communicate. So the first thing you, you learn, and that's basically the key room, is first you aviate, learn how to fly the plane, how to land it. Then you navigate, know where, where the heck you're going to, and then lastly is you learn how to communicate.
so that was that. It's actually my last flight in this plane. Uh, this is a, a club plane. There's 15 of us that are uh, members. And uh, so as I mentioned, it's not the plane, but it's a similar plane to what I got my license in. Being part of a club is, by the way, a great way to, you know, get your license or uh, build further time and get experience. Or basically, it's an economical way to fly. My, both of my kids got their uh, private, um, actually, they got their private pilot license as glider pilots. Um, so they had a glider rating first. And um, then they got their power rating, which is an additional rating on their uh, license in, in this very uh, aircraft. Both of them got their uh, power uh, ticket in, in this uh, 150. Um, and so now we've just not really been using it. Um, so um, that's why I wanted to go up. And that's why I thought of making this video, given that I was initially afraid of flying, and this is what I uh, got my license in. Wanted to uh, share that with 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 with, uh, with those that are either thinking about flying, thinking about learning a little bit more about it, or haven't even thought about it at all. Have been uh, nervous about flying, uh, and uh, I'm really encouraging you know um, folks to go out and take a couple lessons, learn a little bit more about it, see if you like it. Uh, see, um, but one thing's for sure. You're going to learn a lot about how aviation works. More importantly, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to learn about decision making. You're going to learn about the weather. Um, it's 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 an amazing hobby that is not um, um, you know it's very multi-dimensional. And just to get your pilot's license is very multi multi-dimensional. Learning about the different aspects of initially aviating flying the plane, navigating, understanding the weather, planning, uh, making the right decisions. That's the most important uh, aspect that you are, you know, are also part of the FAA curriculum that, that you, uh, you learn about. So, um, yeah, um, hope you uh, take it into consideration and best of luck.